Phil Knight worked as an accountant for the first five years of starting his own company, Blue Ribbon Sports. He literally had employees, salespeople, overseas contracts, and was working with huge Japanese corporations. But regardless, he still had to work nine to five as an accountant every day to make ends meet. All right, so why am I telling you this? Well, I'll explain at the end of the video, but if you are here, it's because you clicked on the thumbnail or you read the title and you are someone considering quitting your job, starting freelance work, doing video or marketing. So here are the three things that I wish I knew before quitting my job to become a business owner or freelancer, whatever you wanna call it. A little backstory, a year ago this month, I quit my job at a Fortune 500 company to start my own business, making social media videos and fitness content online. It's not fair to say it didn't work, but it did have its ups and downs, which I'll get into. Two months ago to make ends meet, I went back into corporate America, and funny enough, that has kickstarted and revived my freelancing career, and I have more work than I can handle coming in the door. So with my limited knowledge, let's get going. My first thing I wish I knew is you are only as good as your ability to do things you don't wanna do. All right, so to take you back in time, I've been a personal trainer for almost a decade. So when I wanted to leave my job, I thought I'm gonna be a personal trainer online, easy way to write programs and have a consistent monthly income doing so. So I reached out to my friends, gave them free personal training and eventually transitioned some of them into paying clients. But alongside doing that, I started putting out videos on social media. And one video that I posted was about pickleball and how many calories you can burn while playing. And for some reason, God had it in mind that a brand would find it. So a pickleball newsletter reached out, liked the content and wanted me to make more fitness centered pickleball videos. So I was getting paid to make social media videos and then other pickleball brands were reaching out to me to make videos for them as well. That's ultimately how I made enough money to leave my job and what was the reason that I did do that. And the weird thing is I was making three or four times as much making videos as I was personal training, but I felt very uncomfortable making videos. And every single time I would get a contract, it was like I had a new boss for three months at a time, two months at a time. And then when that project finished up, nothing. So it was very difficult to get into a rhythm, but I quickly figured out if I'm gonna make enough to live and survive on, I have to get better at editing videos. And one conversation I did have with one of the brands is they wanted me to include some different special effects and graphics that I had no experience using. And I literally told them, hey, I'm not an editor. I am a personal trainer. I make some of these videos, but that is above my pay grade and what I'm able to do. And funny enough, now I edit videos. But what I initially set out to do in personal training was not going to cut it. So I really had to put my head down and learn how to edit videos, learn about cameras, learn about different color spaces and color grading and all of that. So all that to be said, to wrap up number one, it's that you have to learn how to do things you don't want to do. And you can't go in thinking, okay, I'm only going to do this one thing. And if I get asked to do anything else, then I'm going to begrudgingly do it because sometimes those are the best opportunities and the things that really change the direction for better or for worse, but for me for better. Number two, so for a very, very long time, in my case, but probably in your case, you're not really a business owner, you're a freelancer. And from someone working in the corporate world, the word freelancer almost seemed like a bad word, but just means that you are going out, you are working on your own on independent contracts, and you're just grinding to get some. You don't have a bunch of employees underneath you, you don't have a corporate structure. Oftentimes, people like us, if you are a creative person and want to make videos like me, we're not super organized. So for a while, you're going to be just a freelancer trying to grind to get work, and that's fine. I almost felt like I was above doing that, but I learned so much in the process. Even linking back to number one, I was able to get better at things that I really wasn't good at. Every single project that I had, I learned different things, overcame different challenges, and it was all to make me a better worker. And in a lot of ways, this has flowed into my work now in the corporate world. It really is a gift to be able to come in and do the same thing each day and get paid to do it. Because as a freelancer, you're learning how to do different things every time. You're working to different requirements and different constraints 
And if you don't learn to love that process, it's gonna be really difficult to own your own business or be a freelancer. So I don't think you should always be a freelancer because you're always gonna be capped by the amount of time that you have. If you don't have enough time in your day to work for 50 different clients, you're gonna to have to start to hire people. And that's something that I've incorporated. I work with an editor, Jana Harbor Light Creative. You can link on Instagram and, and YouTube. She helps me edit YouTube videos, helps me cover some of the podcasts that I edit, but I wouldn't even be at this point if I hadn't taken on too much work for me to be able to handle on my own. So all that being said, it is okay to start out as a freelancer, getting work, going from project to project, because that is just what you have to do. People have to know that you are good at the thing that you want to set out to do. All right, so number three and the final point is that nothing lasts forever. That might sound redundant and like something you'd see in one of those cheesy corporate plaques that you see on the wall, with like the, the image in the middle and the, and the phrase on top and the bottom, but really no work, no job, no contract is going to last forever. And what I mean by that is even if you sign someone onto a contract, you guys both sign it, you have verbiage in there for either you or the client to stay in the contract or leave the contract or breach or anything like that. Ultimately, you're going to have to work in good faith because you probably don't have enough money to go after a client if they aren't paying you or if they cancel early. You could have it in the contract and they could breach it, but unless you have the funds available to access legal counsel, to take someone to court, it's probably not gonna happen. So with the Pickleball newsletter I was working with, they hired me for a year long contract at X amount per month to do X amount of videos and three or four months into that contract, they canceled it. You know, I could have gone to lengths to try to keep that work, but I did not have the facilities to go after that. So nothing lasts forever. And then I had two months of figuring out what I was gonna do, pivoting, and that just kind of is the feeling. Even if it's a one month contract and you're expecting to get a lot of more work after it, that might not come. If someone says, hey, this is a great experience, this is a great project, I'm gonna pay you a little bit less so that you can get some exposure here, it's easy to think, oh, I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna get a bunch of new work. It just doesn't really work like that. Things come as they do and you gotta accept the project in front of you. So the way I treat corporate America and working in this new job is if they don't have enough money to pay me, if they lay me off, that is okay. I have to live and expect that to be a possibility. And it's honestly been so helpful to have that mindset because it takes the pressure away from seeing this one job as the thing that has to provide me security. Ultimately, the Lord provides security in my life and I don't have anything without him. And additionally, it puts a little bit of onus in my hands saying, okay, I have this and this and this, I'm gonna be okay if this, even a corporate America W2 job falls through the same way that an independent contract falls through. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, I'm in a cool spot now where I have just about as much income and work on deck for my freelancing job as I do in my corporate job but that could change. So what I set out to do in becoming a personal trainer is absolutely not what I'm doing now. I still only have like about one personal training client. That's just my friend and I write programs for him. But most of the stuff I do now is, is video. And it took a lot of time, a lot of effort to get better at this stuff. And I still don't even consider myself that great at it, but it just took saying yes to stuff. And it's a wild ride. So if you can afford to take a risk, take a leap, learn how to do something new, I suggest it. But at the same time, it might not go to plan. That accountant that I was talking about in the beginning of the video that had to work as a CPA nine to five to be able to fund his other business that he was starting, that Phil Knight is the one who started Nike. So I always think about that as an example for myself that you could probably take for yourself is that the path is not straightforward. You don't always just start a business and it takes off. Sometimes you have to make decisions to be able to keep the doors open, to keep the lights on. So yeah, I got that story from the book Shoe Dog. If you haven't read it, very good read. I'll leave you with this. Proverbs 16, 9, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Peace.